Here's Brady looking to throw. Puck fake and his call. And it is caught. Touchdown! David Patton! Into the end zone. And it is caught. Five touchdowns in one quarter of action. We made a story. What I say at halftime, it's going to be a hell of a story. I, I love you, bro. Unbelievable. The NFL's definitive dynasty. Led by the most decorated and awe-inspiring quarterback ever to play the game. They were football's model franchise for two decades. A perennial powerhouse that redefined greatness and reshaped the history books one Super Bowl at a time. This is the story behind Tom Brady's Patriots. As the century turned, the New England Patriots were a team in flux. Following their fruitless trip to the Super Bowl in 1996, which led to the acrimonious exit of future Hall of Fame head coach Bill Parcells, the longtime also-rans gradually descended back into mediocrity under Pete Carroll. Their fortunes didn't improve either after replacing Carroll with Bill Belichick following their disastrous 1999 campaign. In their first season under Belichick, a highly regarded defensive coordinator with only one previous head coaching gig, the Patriots managed a miserable 5-11 record and finished dead last in the AFC East for a second straight year. And despite shaking up the roster over the ensuing offseason, there wasn't much optimism in New England heading into the 2001 campaign. With the exception of quarterback Drew Bledsoe, a three-time Pro Bowler who had recently signed the biggest contract in NFL history, the Patriots had virtually no recognizable names and were widely projected for another last place finish. Then fate intervened. Late in the Patriots' week two matchup against the New York Jets, Bledsoe got flattened by linebacker Mo Lewis, a hit that profoundly altered the course of NFL history. Bledsoe, gonna run it, needs 10 yards. Oh, oh, look at Drew. Yeah, is he, uh, this is with the more critical than the first down to the Patriots' hopes. That hit ultimately chased Bledsoe from the game and forced the Patriots to turn to their backup, an unheralded sophomore and former six-round pick out of Michigan with all of three pass attempts on his NFL resume, Tom Brady. The 24-year-old held his own in his first meaningful NFL action, but a Patriots comeback attempt came up short, and that was just the tip of the iceberg. It turned out that Lewis's hit on Bledsoe had not only given him a concussion, but had also partially torn an artery near the quarterback's ribcage, leading to internal bleeding. In a harrowing development, Bledsoe had to have a tube inserted into his chest to remove the blood that had been accumulating, and that tube stayed there for six days. Ultimately, Bledsoe was sidelined indefinitely, and the Patriots' season, it seemed, was doomed. In reality, however, they were on the precipice of a breakup. With Brady suddenly thrust into starting duty, the Patriots were transformed. The following Sunday, in his first career start, Brady outdueled the great Peyton Manning, leading New England to a commanding 44-13 victory. Brady, the cool California kid, he had a lot of confidence when we talked to him. He said he's been running this offense since the day he walked in the door. Two weeks later, he bested Doug Flutie and the San Diego Chargers. Then he beat Manning again. Before long, Brady had the Patriots above 500 for the first time in two years and looking like a genuine threat. By the time Bledsoe was healthy enough to return to action, Brady was playing too well to return to the bench. Instead, Belichick made Bledsoe the best paid backup QB in NFL history and kept rolling with the kid that some scouts didn't even have on their draft boards. No leap of faith in football history has ever worked out better. With unwavering poise and elite passing efficiency, Brady capped his first season as a starter with six consecutive wins, a run that helped New England edge out the Miami Dolphins for first place in the AFC East and return to the postseason for the first time since 1998. Brady, who went 11-3 in his 14 starts, earned an invitation to the Pro Bowl for his efforts, but the real prize was still to come. Under the glaring postseason spotlight, Brady refused to lose. He powered the Patriots to an epic comeback victory over the Oakland Raiders in the divisional round with the help of the controversial tuck rule decision in the fourth quarter, then bested the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship game, with some help from Bledsoe, to propel New England to just the third Super Bowl in franchise history. 
squaring off against the mighty St. Louis Rams, the so-called greatest show on turf, led by eventual MVP Kurt Warner, the plucky Patriots were naturally heavy underdogs in Super Bowl 36. But that only made what unfolded all the more impressive. In the biggest game of his life, Brady was as solid as ever, helping New England take a double-digit lead into halftime with a touchdown pass in the closing moments of the second. And after the Rams stormed back to tie the game late in the fourth quarter, giving the Patriots the ball and a chance to secure the win with less than two minutes on the clock, Brady started building his legacy as the greatest winner in NFL history in earnest, marching the Patriots into enemy territory from their own 17-yard line to set up a game-winning field goal attempt for Adam Vinatieri. Mark Angle to the left for Adam Vinatieri, 48-yard field goal attempt. Set to go, snap, ball down, kick up, kick is on the way, and it is good! It's good! It's good! Adam Vinatieri booms a 48-yard field goal, and the game is over, and the Patriots are Super Bowl champions! Brady, the former 199th overall pick, a projected backup with questionable athleticism and a so-so arm, had guided the Patriots to their first ever championship and one of the biggest upsets in Super Bowl history. For his efforts, he was named Super Bowl MVP. And while nobody knew it at the time, the most dominant dynasty in NFL history had just been birthed. To their credit, however, the Patriots did recognize that Brady wasn't a mere flash in the pan. Rather, he was the proverbial pony on which to hitch their wagon. Two months after the Super Bowl, New England traded Bledsoe to Buffalo, parting ways with the franchise leader in virtually every passing stat in favor of Brady. And Brady wasted little time vindicating that decision. Though the Patriots' title defense went for naught in 2002, with New England finishing 9-7 and, and actually missing the playoffs, Brady continued to grow leading the NFL in passing touchdowns in his first full season as a starter, despite New England's decidedly pedestrian receiving core. That knack for elevating his teammates and his team was never more apparent than it was in 2003. Led by an increasingly comfortable Brady and a stout defense fortified by Pro Bowl safety Rodney Harrison, the Patriots reasserted themselves in a big way, going 14-2 to reclaim the AFC East and capping their regular season with 12 consecutive victories. Even with no Pro Bowlers to work with on offense, Brady still finished in the top 10 in virtually every meaningful QB stat and third in most valuable player voting, behind Tennessee Titans QB Steve McNair and the MVP himself, Manning. Brady, however, would get the last laugh on both of them. Pitted against the Titans in the divisional round, Brady and the Patriots kept on rolling with Brady setting the tone for a 17-14 victory with a 41-yard touchdown pass on New England's first possession. Brady gets all kinds of protection, throwing down the middle, caught, touchdown! Bethel Johnson, the rookie out of Texas A&M. Then, in a highly anticipated showdown against Manning and the Colts for the AFC Championship, Brady upstaged the MVP who was picked off four times by the Patriots' defense en route to a 24-14 New England victory. For the second time in three years, the Patriots had made it to the Super Bowl, with only the Carolina Panthers standing between them and the Lombardi Trophy. That Super Bowl may best be remembered for Janet Jackson's iconic wardrobe malfunction at halftime, but it also featured one of the quintessential fourth quarter drives from Brady. With the game tied up in the dying moments of a wild back and forth affair, Brady marched the Patriots deep into Panthers territory, completing four or five pass attempts in less than 70 seconds to set up another game-winning chance for Vinatieri. And like deja vu. The Patriots looking for a second Super Bowl title in three years from 41 yards. Looks good. Brady, who threw for 354 yards and three touchdowns in the victory, was named Super Bowl MVP once again, becoming the youngest player ever to take home the honor twice and continuing his meteoric rise. Three years removed from being an anonymous backup, Brady, at 26 years old, had more Super Bowl rings than Joe Namath, Johnny Unitas, and Brett Favre, and not a single playoff loss on his resume. And as it turned out, Brady and the Patriots were only getting started. The following year, with their league-best defense still largely intact and their running game bolstered by the addition of Corey Dillon, the Patriots ran roughshod over the NFL, 
after winning 15 straight to close out their 2003 season, New England opened the 2004 campaign with six wins in a row, setting an NFL record for consecutive regular season and playoff victories. Ultimately, the Patriots finished 14-2 for a second straight year, cruising to another division title while leading the league in point differential for the first time in franchise history. For his part, with Dillon taking up so much of opposing defense's attention, Brady set a then-career high in QB rating and earned his second Pro Bowl nomination. But, as was becoming customary, Brady was at his sharpest in the playoffs. In the divisional round, Brady once again got the best of Manning, converting two-thirds of his pass attempts in a 20-3 victory. Then, with the AFC Championship on the line, Brady was practically perfect, throwing for 207 yards and a pair of touchdowns in a commanding win over the Steelers. And even with the powerhouse Philadelphia Eagles giving him little margin for error in Super Bowl 39, Brady was still sublime, throwing for 236 yards and two touchdowns on 70% passing to lift New England to their second straight championship and third in four years. As they rejoiced at Altel Stadium that night, the Patriots found themselves in rarefied air. Only five other teams had ever repeated as Super Bowl champions. Only one other team, the Dallas Cowboys of the early to mid-1990s, had ever won three Super Bowls in a four-year span. The victory cemented them not only as the definitive dynasty of the early 21st century and the NFL's model franchise, but as one of the most unflappable dynasties in the history of the league, with Brady, still unbeaten in the playoffs, serving as their linchpin. As fate would have it though, the three-time champion would have to wait quite a while before hoisting the Lombardi Trophy again. The Patriots were decidedly vulnerable in 2005 in the wake of considerable roster and coaching staff turnover and amid a wave of injuries that forced New England to use 45 different starters over the course of the season. But they still had Brady, who led the NFL in passing yards for the first time in his career, and a solid enough supporting cast to finish 10-6 and, and secure another AFC East title. Ultimately, with Brady at the helm, the Patriots figured to be a nightmare in the playoffs, and their 28-3 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars in the wildcard round served as a sobering reminder of how dangerous this team and their quarterback is when the lights shine brightest. And then, just like that, the Patriots' pursuit of a three-peat and Brady's perfect postseason record went up in flames. Simply put, New England was no match for the Denver Broncos in the divisional round, with Brady throwing multiple interceptions en route to a 27-13 loss. And that once unfamiliar sting of playoff defeat would soon become disturbingly familiar to Brady. The following season unfolded much like the previous one, with Brady shepherding an excellent Patriots team to yet another division title. Once again, however, the Patriots came up short in the playoffs, this time fumbling away a 21-3 lead to Manning and the Colts in the AFC Championship game. In 2007, however, this pattern of postseason flameouts seemed destined to die. That offseason, for the first time in Brady's career, the Patriots provided their quarterback with an A-list receiver, acquiring future Hall of Famer Randy Moss in a trade with Oakland. Paired up with Moss, then a five-time Pro Bowler looking to get his career back on track, and fellow newcomer Wes Welker, Brady transformed from a great quarterback into a superhuman one. That year, Brady put up video game numbers, setting a new single season record for passing touchdowns with 50, 23 of which were caught by Moss, who also established the new single season record for receiving touchdowns. Meanwhile, Brady averaged more than 300 passing yards per game to lead the NFL in that department as well, while also posting the highest QB rating of his career at 117.2. Propelled by Brady, the eventual MVP, and what was then the most prolific offense in league history, the Patriots didn't lose a game that year, becoming the first and only team to go undefeated in a 16-game season. They weren't merely dominant. They were unstoppable and they eventually waltzed into Super Bowl 42, poised to solidify themselves as the single greatest team in football history. That didn't happen though. Instead, the New York Giants hung tough as the proverbial David to the Patriots' Goliath, with their defense keeping Brady largely in check. And when the Giants found themselves trailing by only four points with less than three minutes to go, Eli Manning shamelessly stole Brady's bit engineering one of the most unforgettable comeback drives in NFL history, highlighted by the single most iconic play ever to happen in a Super Bowl. Pressure from Thomas off the edge. Eli Manning stays on his feet, airs it out down the field. 
It is caught by Tyree. A few plays after that incredible catch by David Tyree, the Giants took the lead on a touchdown pass to Plexico Burris. And although they had left just enough time on the clock for Brady to respond in kind and add another epic comeback to his resume, it wasn't meant to be. Brady and the Patriots didn't gain a single yard on the ensuing possession. And just like that, their perfect season was no more. As devastating as that loss was though, things were about to get even worse for Brady and New England. In the first quarter of the Patriots 2008 season opener, after an agonizing offseason of regrets and what ifs, Brady tore both his ACL and MCL in his left knee on a hit from Bernard Pollard, sidelining him for the remainder of the season and casting an immediate and profound pall over the Patriots' potential redemption season. Fourth year backup Matt Castle acquitted himself well in Brady's stead, but without Tom Brady, the Patriots were just another team. Though they still managed a solid 11-5 record, the Patriots were dethroned by the Dolphins atop the AFC East, snapping their streak of consecutive division titles at five. And by virtue of some lousy tiebreaker luck, New England fell short of the wild card and ultimately missed the postseason for the first time since 2002. Needless to say, Brady's return in 2009 was a welcome one for the Patriots, one that felt like a harbinger of more glory for New England. Instead, however, as exceptional as Brady was upon returning to the field, New England fell back into its old pattern, dominating the regular season, but invariably falling short of the ultimate prize. From 2009 through 2013, the Patriots averaged more than 12 wins per season and easily won their division each year, but never once got back to the top of the mountain. They came closest in 2011 when the Patriots' explosive offense, led by Brady, Welker, and an unstoppable sophomore tight end named Rob Gronkowski, propelled New England back into the Super Bowl, but for the second time in less than a half decade, Brady and company were bested by Eli Manning and the Giants. Brady, barring a defensive foul, the game ends here to the end zone. Hernandez is there, tipped and batted, Gronkowski can't get it, incomplete. And the New York Giants are the Super Bowl champs in February. For all the countless records and accolades Brady racked up during that time, including Comeback Player of the Year in 2009 and his second career MVP award in 2010, it seemed the aging star had exhausted every last bit of postseason magic years prior. In reality, however, this was just a championship lull phase for Brady and the Patriots, who were about to revive their deposed dynasty with an unforgettable second act. In 2014, after putting up another typically brilliant regular season, the 37-year-old Brady emphatically dispelled the notion that he was finished winning championships, carrying the Patriots into Super Bowl 49 and past the Seattle Seahawks in one of the most compelling championship games in football history. Though that Super Bowl is best remembered for Pete Carroll's mystifying and regrettable play call in the dying seconds of the fourth quarter, the Patriots wouldn't have been able to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat without an all-time performance from Brady, who was named Super Bowl MVP after erasing a 10-point second-half deficit and ultimately throwing for four touchdowns and 328 yards. With that, Brady entered one of football's most exclusive clubs joining Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw as the only quarterbacks ever with four Super Bowl rings. As it turned out though, Brady's restorative championship season and his increasingly distinguished place in the annals of football history came at a cost to his reputation. Months after he was reunited with the Lombardi Trophy, Brady was implicated in one of the biggest scandals in modern football history, Deflategate. Following an exhaustive investigation, the NFL had determined that the Patriots had likely intentionally deflated footballs during their romp of the Colts in the AFC Championship game months prior, and that Brady was at least generally aware of the scheme. Underinflated balls, it should be noted, are easier to throw and catch. And because each team provides its own balls for gameplay, the Patriots would have had an advantage over the Colts. For his complicity, Brady, who had dismissed the claims as ridiculous in the immediate aftermath of the AFC Championship game, received a four-game suspension, one in a slew of penalties imposed on the Patriots. You're so familiar with the equipment, how could you not know that the balls were underinflated? What would you say to them? Well, I addressed that a little bit earlier in that, you know, I, like I said, I, I don't put any thought into the footballs after I choose them. Um, you know, when you're out there playing, you know, in front of 70,000 people like a home crowd 
left. You don't think about it. You're just reacting to the game. I don't certainly think about the football. I just assume that it's the same one that I approved uh, you know, in the pregame. Brady, however, was resolved to clear his name, appealing his suspension through the NFLPA before taking it to the courts. A protracted and ugly process that hung over the Patriots' 2015 campaign, which, fittingly enough, ended in the AFC Championship game. Finally, in the summer of 2016, roughly a year and a half after the accusations of ball deflating first surfaced, the embattled QB decided to drop it, acquiescing to his suspension and the stain on his legacy after his appeal was once again shut down in court. And it was indeed a major blow. Football fans had already resented Brady and the Patriots for their staggering success, and Deflategate not only fueled their contempt, but gave them license to impugn Brady's integrity, credibility, and resume. As humbling as it was though, sitting out the first four games of the 2016 campaign, Brady returned to the field in week five as focused and as brilliant as ever, and seemingly determined to prove that he was Tom Brady on account of his talent, football sense, and work ethic, and not because of some partially deflated footballs. The Patriots were nearly perfect from week five onward, going 11-1 to finish the regular season with Brady back under center. For his efforts, despite playing only a dozen games, Brady finished second in MVP voting. Brady then powered the Patriots to their second Super Bowl in a three-year span, where he ultimately authored what was unquestionably the definitive performance of his storied career. After watching his team fall into a 28-3 hole against the Atlanta Falcons, Brady orchestrated a second half for the ages, eventually forcing overtime with a comeback so epic and so improbable that it'd be hackneyed if it wasn't history. And on the first possession of OT, Brady needed less than four minutes to cap the largest comeback in Super Bowl history. Toss to White. He's in! Patriots win the Super Bowl! Brady has his fifth! What a comeback! Along the way, Brady and the Patriots set countless Super Bowl records, and this indelible victory, it seemed, would have been a fitting final chapter to Brady's singular career. With five Super Bowl rings, he was officially the winningest quarterback ever. He was also now the only player in history to be named Super Bowl MVP four times. He had solidified himself as the GOAT, and he had silenced the haters who disingenuously attributed his success to New England's cheating. But Brady wasn't done. For an encore, the 40-year-old put up another MVP season, his third for those counting at home, and brought the Patriots within inches of a repeat championship, throwing for a Super Bowl record 505 yards and three touchdowns in a heartbreaking loss to the Eagles. But before long, the ageless Brady was back on top. The following year, after signing a two-year extension worth $70 million, Brady rewarded the Patriots for their continuing faith in him, earning his 14th career Pro Bowl selection to tie the NFL record before leading New England back to the Super Bowl for a third straight season. And just like he did almost two decades prior, the 41-year-old Brady got the better of the Rams in the Super Bowl, gutting his way through a low-scoring affair and an eventual 13-3 victory, one that made him the first quarterback ever to win a Super Bowl after turning 40. With his third Super Bowl title in a five-year span, bringing his total ring count to six, Brady all but guaranteed that his legacy as the greatest quarterback ever would never be threatened and that this dynasty that he'd anchored would stand alone in the history books. But that title also marked the end of their extended reign and kickstarted the unceremonious and unbecoming end to Brady's iconic run in New England. In 2019, after once again steering New England to a division title despite a notable drop-off in his productivity, Brady and the Patriots were foiled in the first round of the postseason, their earliest playoff exit in a decade. Memorably, Brady threw a pick six in the dying seconds of the fourth to put the game on ice. And that gut-wrenching interception ended up being his final pass for the Patriots. In the wake of New England's defeat, with Brady's contract about to become voidable, rumors and speculation about his future with the Patriots exploded. And soon enough, the most iconic partnership between a player and a franchise in NFL history came to an end. On the eve of the 2020 offseason, Brady made the bombshell announcement that his time with the Patriots had reached its end following an unforgettable 20-year run. According to reports, the 42-year-old had wanted a new multi-year deal from the Patriots, 
but the club was disinclined to meet his demands in light of his age, his waning performance, and the increasing friction between him and Belichick. As Tom Curran of NBC Sports Boston put it, in the end, a tangible effort by the Patriots to keep Tom Brady in New England never happened. So, after winning six Super Bowls, nine conference championships, 17 division titles, countless individual awards, and effectively coming to embody the New England Patriots, Brady became a free agent for the first time in his career. Before long, he landed a lucrative multi-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, precipitating a new era for himself and for the franchise he had come to be synonymous with. For Brady, that second act was filled with continued success, including yet another championship that further separated him from the mere mortals in football's history books. The Patriots, meanwhile, exuded mediocrity for years following Brady's departure, stumbling along as an afterthought for the first time in a quarter century. Still, even though their paths ultimately diverged, Brady and the Patriots are forever inextricably linked. For 20 years, they built an unparalleled legacy together. It began out of happenstance and wasn't without its controversies, but it was ultimately the most prosperous, most enduring marriage of a player in a franchise the NFL has ever seen and will ever see. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.